following program is made possible in part by the Dayton Bar Association. My name is Jeff Swillinger. I'm your host this evening of the new season of You and the Law. Uh, we hope that you're not just a first time viewer, but if you are, we've got a little bit of background information to give you before we uh, meet our guest tonight, Scott Miller, Vice President and uh, Compliance and General Counsel for our Certified Cultivators, uh, which you will learn more about in the course of our doing this medical marijuana primer for Ohio. So background wise, the show is brought to you and underwritten by the Dayton Bar Association and brought to you by the wonderful people at, at Dayton Access Television, DATV. The show can be seen live this evening on Spectrum if you live in Dayton and in certain communities to the east and west and north uh, it's also streaming live. Uh, you need to go to DATV.org to stream on. Uh, we had a few technical di difficulties, most uh, likely having to do with uh, my in unfamiliarity with uh, some updating we needed to do. So we're getting a mildly late start tonight. I'll take responsibility for that. So once again, I, I want to welcome you and tell you that for those of you who might uh, want to uh, suggest that others see this show who live south of Dayton, uh, the show will not be seen live, but people can try to uh, live stream in, like I said, on DATV.org. Um, the Miami uh, Valley uh, Communications Council, uh, also a Spectrum affiliate, handles the shows that they produce in the south part of uh, the county here. And they've agreed to show our program uh, not live, but in the uh, succeeding weeks, uh, I direct you to www.mvcc.net for their schedules as to when the show might be available. Uh, I uh, let me take a look at my notes and so much this is the first show of the year and see if we've got anything else I need to uh, uh, advise you of. Um, no, I think that's it. And I want to get started quickly because we have a lot of material this evening to discuss. Once again, the topic for tonight is medical marijuana and uh, a primer for the state of Ohio. Our guest is Scott Miller. And Scott works for Certified Cultivators located in Dayton, Ohio. Again, he's the Vice President of Compliance and General Counsel for Certified Cultivators. Uh, uh, Scott is an attorney, as I mentioned, uh, has been in private practice in the past and has been now with Certified Cultivators since I believe uh, well, first of all, since the House bill came into effect uh, permitting under some of the restrictions that we're going to be talking about tonight in Ohio in 2016, uh, I think uh, certified cultivators went live after the application process and a lot of other issues that compliance issues that ne needed to be met, I believe in either 2018 or 2019 and has been in business uh, doing this cultivation work, which uh, Scott will talk about um, in a moment uh, since that time. So Scott, uh, I really appreciate your being here. I welcome you and uh, let's get started. Um, tell us uh, uh, what, just generally what medical marijuana is. And uh, although I'm maybe jumping ahead a little, I, I suspect that some people would be curious to know what the difference is between uh, cannabis, hemp, and marijuana, and maybe the subgroup of medical marijuana. Would that be a, a good place to start? And then maybe we'll talk a little bit about the history of how we got here. Sure, absolutely. Um, 
start with uh, the difference between cannabis, hemp, and marijuana. Cannabis um, is a family of plants that includes hemp and marijuana. The distinguishing factor between uh, hemp and marijuana is that hemp has uh, less than 0.3% of a compound called uh, Delta-9 THC, which everybody refers to as THC, and marijuana has upwards of, the plant can have upwards of, I don't know, 30 to possibly 40% THC in it. So the psychoactive, the content of the psychoactive content between the two is what uh, differentiates them, but they're both part of the cannabis family. Um, now, with that differentiation, we also have the differentiation that will bring us to medical marijuana in Ohio by uh, discussing, I guess, a little bit of what the status is of marijuana in general uh, as a legal uh, uh, matter in this country. It's my understanding that uh, at a federal level, marijuana is still regulated and uh it is in most instances still illegal to possess and uh to hold in bulk amounts and to distribute and uh you can get in a lot of trouble uh if you do any of those things in violation of the law is that right yeah that's correct it's um prohibited prohibited by federal law and um a bit of history about uh marijuana in Good. in uh the united states is it used to be in the in the early 1900s, it was legal. It was used um, for medical purposes. My understanding is that it could be found in pharmacies uh, at the time and doctors would uh, use it to um, treat certain ailments. I'm not sure of the quality or strength or anything like that um, back in, in those days, but in um, 1937, there was a, an act passed called the Marijuana Tax Act, which effectively banned uh, marijuana. It didn't make it illegal, but it put a heavy tax on it. And so if uh, individuals um, had marijuana and they weren't paying a tax or if they were selling it or using it and not paying the tax, they'd be subject to um, prosecution under this, under, this, under this act. And that occurred, that was in place until all the way through both world wars up until 1970 when um, the Controlled Substances Act was signed into law. And that law um, banned cannabis outright, but they, uh, the federal government at the time, they were intending to ban cannabis temporarily and a, 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 um, a commission was put together to research um, cannabis and how it was being used throughout the country and the dangers of it and its effects on society. And that commission um, was appointed by the president and uh, there was an individual by the name of Ram, uh, Raymond Schaefer, who was the commissioner of, of that group. And he went out and found doctors, college presidents, attorneys, psychiatrists, a wealth of um, professionals around the country and um, put together a study, which ended up being published called the marijuana, it was called Marijuana, A Signal of Misunderstanding is what they, they, the title of their publication was. And this was for Congress. And the objective of the commission was to evaluate the total impact of actual and potential harm of marijuana use on American society. They looked at all kinds of factors um, of how marijuana can be used. And they looked at, they, they analyzed, um, you know, experimental users, intermittent users, moderate and heavy users, very heavy users, the effects on these individuals. They um, looked at impact it could have on society, the current at the time um, views of marijuana and how those weren't necessarily true, but because of the media's representation of them, that people thought they were true. And ultimately they put together um, this report, which I mentioned is called Marijuana, a Signal of Misunderstanding. And you can Google it and, and read it. It's a 200 some place page, 200 some page report. And they concluded and the recommendation of con Congress was people at the t people are allowed to use al or drink alcohol, smoke cigarettes. They, we all know the dangers of both of those. And we believe as a commission that people could use and be responsible and um, 
have marijuana legally available and, and charge the American public with the same responsibility that we give them with tobacco and alcohol. And they thought it should be legal, but um, Nixon at the time didn't want that answer. And so they, they kept it on the, uh, on the Controlled Substances Act and it's stayed there ever since. Okay. That's a very helpful background. Now, with that in mind, uh, I would remind all those who are viewing this that uh, any information you receive tonight uh, is no substitute for medical information that you've received from your uh, uh, doctors about medical marijuana and related subjects and any information you would receive from attorneys guiding you through the federal and state laws that apply. We don't want anyone thinking that uh, they can go out and buy and use any kind of marijuana and that it's legal, even if they are using it for uh, uh, allegedly uh, uh, medical reasons. So just want to remind folks that after that uh, helpful introduction, which then leads us to, okay, so how do we get from those federal prescriptions to now having medical marijuana legal with certain restrictions in the state of Ohio. How do we move forward from uh, the Nixon administration? Uh, I, I guess we can take a big leap to the 2016, but uh, fill, fill us in. Well, um, in the 90s, I'm not sure which year in the 90s, but I believe it was Colorado. Colorado or California was the first, was the first state to um, pass a, a medical marijuana act and allow the use of medical marijuana. I believe it took several years for the program to roll out, but it started in the Western states, as many people know, and um, slowly as move medical programs have started to move um, towards the East Midwest. So in, in Ohio in 2016, well, before 2016, actually, there was a, um, a medical uh, medical marijuana initiative pushed that went to the voters and the voters um, declined it. And I don't remember the reasons why it was declined at the time, but that was a big reason. That was a big reason why the next time around in 2016 with House Bill 523, the voters approved medical marijuana um, in Ohio. And it set up an infrastructure that's governed by three state agencies in Ohio, the, the Ohio Department of Commerce, the Ohio Board of Pharmacy, and the Ohio Medical Board. And those three agencies run and are in charge of um, Ohio's medical marijuana program. Okay. Now, um, it wasn't that simple. House Bill 523 was passed, and I imagine there were regulations that were promulgated uh, to help interpret the law, but uh, there was a gradual um, process to uh, ease in over the next uh, approximately, what, three years before this really went statewide. That's so, correct. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Um, would be, and that's, and could you just briefly, I don't wanna get too deep into the weeds over the licensing process, but I think it'd be helpful people to understand what folks like certified cultivators, uh, what, and maybe this will lead into the sort of the tripartite uh, explanation here of cultivators, uh, dispensaries, and uh, 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 grow, oh, let's see, what, what am I missing here? Processing uh, facilities. Processing facilities along sure. with labs, well, along with sure. uh, laboratory inspection. So why don't we, walk through that a little bit and why we had a bill in 16, but it took some time for this all to kind of get off the ground. And I want to constantly remind people that we're talking about medical marijuana tonight. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll start with uh, just each state agency again and what they're in charge of and then uh, move into the application process that um, I went through. Okay. So uh, there's as I mentioned, three state agencies, the Ohio Department of Commerce, who are in charge of um, three different types of licenses, uh, cultivation licenses, which are the um, companies that are allowed to grow medical marijuana. And there's only um, a few of those licenses. They're, 
are the processing companies, which are the manufacturers. And if um, anybody's familiar with medical marijuana products, those would be um, oils, uh, processing oils and uh, making gummies, drinks, pat patches, lotions, things of no those nature. Those are what processing companies do. They take the plant material and extract the oil from it and make products from that. Um, the Department of Commerce is also in charge of testing labs. There's independent testing labs um, in Ohio that are charged with testing all the product. They have no relationship to any of the cultivators or processors. They're totally independent. Um, so those are the three um, licenses the Department of Commerce is in charge of overseeing. And the Board of Pharmacy, they're in charge of overseeing all the dispensaries throughout Ohio. Initially, there were 60 dispensaries dispensary licenses that were issued. Um, there are 58 open dispensaries today throughout the state. And earlier this year, the Board of Pharmacy, uh, based on patient population demand and patient access to the 60 dispensaries that were open, issued 73 more licenses after a competitive application process. So in 2023, uh, there'll be 74 more uh, dispensaries opening up. Now these are the, the board, retailers. This is where people go to, to get the marijuana. Okay. That's yeah. correct. And you have to have a, we'll get into it, I'm sure, but you have to have For a sure. medical card to even get into these facilities and into the dispensaries to purchase the products. Um, the Board of Pharmacy is also in charge of registering uh, the patients and caregivers. Patients, if they're not able to make it to a dispensary because of physical ailments or can have a uh, an appointed caregiver who goes to the dispensary for them. Um, and the Board of Pharmacy is also in charge of approving all forms and doses of medical marijuana before it can be sold to patients. So um, certified cultivators is a, is a cultivator and a processor. And all of the products that we um, grow and make in our facility are approved products by the Board of Pharmacy. They dictate what we're allowed to we're allowed to make and sell to dispensaries. And then there's the Ohio Medical Board, which um, certifies all the physicians to recommend medical marijuana. I want to make sure that everybody's aware that not all physicians um, have the have the ability to, to recommend medical marijuana. They have to go through a certain amount of training uh, and it's optional to the physician. There's about 500 or so physicians throughout the state that are, are uh, approved to recommend medical marijuana to patients. Um, so they those have are the specific certification from the state medical board. Correct. They have to go through a, a certain amount of continuing medical education okay. and uh, in order to be certified uh, to recommend medical marijuana to patients. So those are the those are the three departments and in, in what they govern. Um, and I'll talk about a little bit now about how um, our path, uh, the application process for for um, for certified cultivators. And, um, and in the course of that, would you tell us a little bit more about what cultivators do, it, it, and um, as well as uh, what the testing labs are about, the processors and the dispensaries, more spe a little bit more specifically, but in in good order. In sure, sure. Tell us. So in, um, as we mentioned in 2016, the House bill was passed in Ohio to allow medical marijuana and set up the framework for um, for the licenses and for how, how the structure would work in Ohio. And in 2017, part of the issuing these licenses were competitive application process, processes that were um, blind application processes. So the state who was receiving the applications didn't know who the applicants were in the in the um, created part of the applications. So there was two parts of the application. One was an identification section of who the company is, who are the owners, where is this facility going to be located? And then there was a graded part of the application that was a business plan, operations plan, security plan, financial plan, 100, this in total was 115 pages of, of information about a company that couldn't have any identifiers in it so that the graders didn't know who they were grading and everything was graded on an 
even bases. So that was the competitive part. But in 2017, um, the Department of Commerce released their draft applications for cultivators in, in uh, April. And that's when certified cultivators started to apply for, for its license. The license, the application was due uh, the second half of June, 2017, and that was turned into the Department of Commerce. Immediately after that, dispensary applications, which we did apply for a dispensary at the time, we, we didn't get one, but we applied for a dispensary. Those applications were in the next three months. Um, and then in the second week of December, processing applications were due. So pretty much all of 2017, myself and certified cultivators were applying for these licenses. And it was a very in-depth detailed process. The state did a great job of making it fair for everybody. I can honestly state that if it wasn't fair and it wasn't, and it was a biased process, we probably wouldn't have gotten a license because we're just little guys from Dayton, Ohio, <laughs> <laughs> but they, yeah, uh, they did a great good. job. And, and to your next point of the applications took place in 2017, they had to be graded by the state and evaluated and vetted and made sure there was no bad actors within any of the organizations that the state wanted to award licenses to. And once they went through that process and announced the winners, the winners had to execute on the, on the plans that they submitted to the state. The plans were basically promises to the state saying, Hey, we promise we're going to do this. We're going to be the best at this. We're going to have the best security, the best operations, best everything. So when the state said, okay, you get a license, they gave each company a provisional license, which was basically the right to execute on its plans, but not operate, not have any cannabis in the facility. You had to build out your facility, do everything that you said you're going to do in the application. The state would come in and inspect. And then if they say, okay, yes, you did everything you said you're going to do, or no, you didn't do everything you said you're going to do. You still need to do this, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, the company would have to do that before the state would allow them to operate and bring medical marijuana into the facility to, to begin production. So it takes another year for all these companies to even build out their facilities. They have their sites identified and their plans laid out, but it took another, you know, a year to a year and a half for companies to build their build their warehouse or build the facility and these are the grow facilities right the grow this is facilities. where you are growing cultivating the plants right. that's what you do okay yes that's what we do okay we do it we our our facility is indoors there's some facilities that are greenhouses um, but everything has to be inside there's no open field medical marijuana facilities in Ohio. And, and access to these facilities is highly regulated. It's Correct. They're meant to be, supposed to be, and are uh, very secure. And yes. this is uh, checked by the state, I'm sure, on a regular basis, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go on, please. Okay. Sure. So we actually were awarded our license at the end of our cultivation license and processing license at the end of 2018, beginning of 2019. So it took us all of 2019 and into 2020 for us to build our facility out, get everything lined up, build our team and be ready to start operations. So once we were awarded our certificate of operation in July of 2020, that's when we started. There were companies that got started a little before us, but um, it's just the way it goes. It, it takes a long time to build out a facility. We retrofitted a warehouse, and you know, it's, I um, went obviously went to law school, and this was never on my radar in law school. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot of things doing this, and it requires it requires every every bit of every piece of different areas of the laws. It's a very multifaceted operation for sure. Oh, okay. Well, I've done that's corporate, an law, corporate yeah. law, real estate law. I mean, you name it, it comes comes across my desk. 
So uh, you're getting an education while you are uh, maintaining compliance on behalf of, of yeah. your uh, organization. Okay. Yeah. Now, while you were going through this process and other folks uh, seeking similar certification, we're going through some, as you said, had already gotten started, but the uh, other folks in the in the food chain, I'll call it, uh, here that you've mentioned, um, the uh, the uh, uh, testing labs, the processes, and the dispensaries, were they already moving forward also, and were some of those, I, I imagine, already uh, in business uh, as you got started? Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, there were processors in business. There's there were cultivators um, in business well ahead of us. Testing lab has to be um, up and running for any of those for any of the product to to hit the shelves. It has to be tested. Um, that's one of the differentiating differentiating factors between um, a medical marijuana program and a recreational program. It's not that recreational products aren't tested. It's it's that uh, they're all tested and they all run through the same tests, but the thresholds for each test are a lot higher, a lot more lenient, I would say, for recreational cannabis, still safe for consumption, um, but not thresholds for a medical product. So, now, you, you've you added that here, that term recreational marijuana. Now, what is what is the relevance of that term to the state of Ohio at this point? There is no recreational or if the proper legal name I would uh, uh, is uh, adult use, but that's not legal in Ohio at the moment. It's only a medical program. Okay, that, but there are other states of the some 14 or 15 states. I think it, I read in the materials you sent me, maybe correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there, there is a recreational use permitted by the legislatures. Is that right in certain states? Yeah, that's correct. There's many states out west, Colorado, California, Washington. Um, Illinois is a recreational state now. Uh, okay. I believe Michigan's a recreational state. Okay. So there's, and there's states out east as well starting to become recreational. Okay. Well, that's not the focus tonight, but I'm glad you, you explained that so that people understand. They, they hear this term, they read about it that that is is not applicable to medical marijuana in in its pure sense of approval by the state and the state legislature for uh, uh, people who have to go through this process in Ohio who want to receive uh, a card to permit them to receive the medical dispense marijuana if they meet a qualifying condition. And, and again, we'll get to that in a moment too, I guess. But, but I guess the important thing right now is in the process we're talking about, you are the grower. And um, I, I suspect there's some uh, differentiation in terms of what you grow, uh, the, I don't know, is the right word purity or the amount of THC in what you grow. You have to regulate all that before, and then that will then in the next process you can do what you do, but next step in the process, it goes to testing labs to see whether you've done it the way the law requires. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's correct. So we we grow um, indoors, high quality uh, cannabis, and the each strain is tested, um, each type of of um, product that comes off the plant is tested separately. So it's a, a the different size flour are tested in batches and every 15 pounds of flour or bud is a half a percent of that weight has to be sampled by the testing lab, run through their battery of tests, the state required tests in order for us and pass in order for us to uh, dispense it to, to dispensaries. Yeah. So the, the way it works is we'll grow the plants for anywhere from uh, we'll take take clones of plants. Those grow for about two weeks um, to develop roots, and then they get go into a, a bigger grow medium for another two weeks, um, and then they go into a room 
where they'll stay for nine more weeks until they're harvested. And at harvest, they cut the plants at the base of the stalk and hang them to dry for 14 days. Once they dry for 14 days in specific um, conditions, they are taken off, all the plant materials taken off the stock and batched up. And that's when the testing lab, a third party testing lab will come into our facility under camera, under regulatory scrutiny and sample each batch, each 15 pound batch of, uh, of medical marijuana. If it passes the tests, then we're allowed to either move it to our processing license or if it passes a, uh, a um, more tests than it, than it would just to transfer to a processing license, but several more tests, um, then we're allowed to package it up and sell it to dispensaries who then dispense it to patients. Okay. But the key factor is before you can do anything with what you've grown, it has to go through this testing process. Yeah, and, the, and the testing labs, I'm sure, are licensed and closely regulated and watched, and uh, everything is documented. And then, as you said, you if you get the approvals, you've got a couple paths here. One would be to uh, send it on to the processors, and we'll talk about what they do next, but uh, or possibly package it up yourselves and send it out to uh, uh, the uh, dispensaries that you have a uh, working relationship with again so that they can sell them at retail, I guess is what I would say. Yes. And to go to the regulatory oversight and to um, ensure that everything is tracked and traced and done by the book, the state in most most states, if not all states, require um, licensed operators to use what's called a seed to sale software and they mandate which one has to be used and in ohio it's called metric m-e-t-r-c and metric is the predominant one used throughout the united states and so the way it works is when we take cuttings of a plant they're assigned a specific name and metric which we're which we uh designate and we say we have 20 cuttings they're in this room the state can come and say, show me this 20 cuttings in this room. Once they graduate from just a cutting stage to the next phase, which is a little bit older, and they're in a pot, each plant is given a unique identified, unique, uh, unique serial number tag that metric supplies to us. We, we get them from metric and they're in the state, in this software system. So we say, okay, this plant with this strain this strain plant is in this room. The state can come and say, okay, show me the serial number that's in this room. So each plant has its own serial number when it's harvested. These tags stay with the plant. Once it's dried, um, and then when all the plants are batched up, they kind of lose that serial number identification. It's still in the system, but the 15 pound batch of plant gets a, a, new, a new serial number that applies to the 15 pounds and the state that's that's what the testing lab comes and samples they'll take a sample a percent of that of the weight that's applied to that serial numbered tag the state can come in they can audit the whole process see where the plants came from what tags they went into um, and then it also goes when those tags are transferred from our cultivation license to a dispensary or from the cultivation license to our processing license um, you know, if it's turned into oil, we can tell what plants made up that oil, what room they started in, what room they grew in, um, what they were fed, you know, everything. So it's all highly, highly traced. Hmm. Sounds like it's a very, very specific process. And I guess it has to be under the circumstances. Okay. So tell us next in the process, let's, let's say, it's approved and you pass it on to a processor. What's a processor? Uh, what do they do? Yeah. Sure. Uh, I know that's so not what you do, but let's at least actually, give the public a little information on that. We do have a, we have a processing license. So we have a lab and a oh, kitchen. We do. It's all in the same facility. 
we have a, it's co-licensed location um so oh, we okay okay that's so that you can go the dispensary route under certain circumstances right, right? so we okay. it's 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 interesting because it's um our company owns both licenses but for compliance purposes we kind of we have to treat both licenses as separate entities okay. not for you know accounting and all that but for for compliance purposes they're we just treat it as two totally separate entities and that's it keeps things a lot cleaner for moving um you know product from one license to another making sure we have all the tests completed before we transfer from one license to another because uh, one thing that metric the state seed to sale program doesn't do is place control it doesn't have great controls in place so the operators are responsible for making sure um, there are proper controls in place so we could potentially transfer something to our processing license um, that doesn't have the full testing panels and we're not trying to do anything um, you know if it's an accident it's still uh, a compliance issue so um, but getting back to the processing license processors will take plant material, bulk plant material, and create product out of it, um, anywhere from oils to um, gummies to there's there's uh, a lot of a lot of products that they can make with plant material and, and extracting the oil out of the plant material. What we do is we use uh, specific extraction equipment, plant material gets loaded into it about anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds at a time oil is extracted from that plant material and it goes through uh, it comes out as uh, crude oil much like extracting oil from the ground it needs further refinement uh, to get to a, a useful product or that's safe for consumption so that's uh that's what we do is we make under our processing license we make vape vaporizing pens which have oil in them we make uh, edibles, gummies, drinks, um, numerous amount of products that uh, that can be used under to treat medical conditions in Ohio. Hey, I want you to talk about the vaporizing pen for a moment. The others seem to be a little bit more uh, identifiable just by name. <laughs> yeah, if you'd explain that. And also go back, you touched on this earlier, but just go back a little bit to talk about the fact that you're not putting in uh, an unlimited amount of THC in this product. It's not permitted. So people understand that throughout the process. Sure. So in the, in the grow process, you know, there's no affecting the, the THC in the plant. If you, if you create healthy plants, the, the plant will grow, the, it'll have whatever THC it has as it grows as a healthy plant. You can, there's a, if there's ever plant issues, it can stunt the production of THC in the plant, but um, Ohio does have a cap on THC. Uh, it's at 35% in plant material. That's uh, bud or flower or shake trim, which is just other parts of the plant. That's not, we're not allowed to exceed that amount of THC in the plant in order to be able to sell it to uh, dispensaries. The Ohio does allow a 10% variance off of that, off of uh, 35%. So it can go up to 38.5%, but that's because it's a living growing organism. It's hard to, you know, maintain exact an exact number. Um, with respect to the lab and the processing licenses, Sorry, I should say processing license lab can be confused with testing lab, but um, processing license items and oil specifically is capped at 70% THC content. Um, there's, I believe there's some bills floating around now in the Ohio legislature that are looking at increasing that amount. But right now the cap is at 70% THC. So what we do is when we extract the oil, um, we extract to the best of our ability to 70%. Um, and if we can't, you know, we uh, further refine it so that it is 70% or, um, you know, in gummies, you can make them specific milligrams as opposed to a percent. So that's how um, it works in Ohio. Okay. 
Now, that sounds like a large number to me, 70% of anything. Okay. So, so can you explain relative to this process is at this point, what that might mean for the ultimate user who we're going to be getting to uh, in, in a few minutes? Um, we have uh, about 20 minutes remaining. So I think we've got some time to complete this. Uh, we'll both be mindful of that, but, um, 70% of, is there anything such as 100% THC? Because I, I presume uh, that- <laughs> I think there's 99.9%, okay. okay. but it's not for sale in Ohio. That's for, I know that. Okay, so the 70% that you're talking about or the lesser percent, let's say 38% that you were talking about. Uh, it, it, we have to be mindful, I guess, that the different entities that have a hand in this by regulating it, Department of Commerce, Board of Pharmacy, Ohio Medical Board, the overall process, uh, they're constantly overseeing uh, and, and I imagine evaluating uh, what is medically appropriate, medically necessary, and therefore what is allowable in terms of percents of THC for the people who are the end users. Is that a, is that a fair way of describing it? That's correct. And we have to, um, on our labels and um, specifically with the products that we're even allowed to sell, the hardware we're even allowed to sell, they have to be able to be dosed. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things written in the laws, uh, the products have to be dosed. So um, while 70% mm -hmm. might seem strong to, to some, the, the, the products themselves are capable of being dosed. And so people are no. able to explain uh, what dosing means. Dosing means just incremental um, amounts of the medicine. So if someone, if someone has a license to, uh, or a card, and, and again, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but as a card to go into a, a dispensary and purchase some medical marijuana, um, where does dosing come into play at that time? What is it? Is it, it does their physician recommend a certain dosage that is consistent with their qualification to receive it? Or how, how is the dosing um, regulated? Do all people, if 38% is the most right now, do all people get 38% quality of THC, for instance, if that's a correct way of saying it? Well, there's um, the dispensaries have a variety of of, uh, of product THC ranges, you know, from low to, to high. Uh, so there's there's always options available um, for any mm -hmm. anybody who's concerned about high potency products. But um, dosing specifically means each product, for instance, a vape cart, you don't consume all the oil in one. Um, pull on the vape cart or one inhale of the vape cart, each each inhale has a specific uh, dosed amount of THC that the patient knows they're getting. And so um, if they pay mindful, pay attention to the instructions and, um, you know, their physician probably has recommendations as well. And so do the individuals who work at the dispensaries have uh, are, are very good at recommending proper amounts and providing caution to to people who are, are new to medical marijuana. Okay. I'll, I may get back to that again as we go into the discussion about the dispensaries in a moment. So, so in the process now, we're cultivating, we're having testing on site at, at the site of the cultivators. Well, we have processors. Uh, you can be both a cultivator and processor. So we have to go through the testing process uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, You're cultivator correct. and a processor, and yeah, with any end, product, yeah. with the end game being to get it to uh, the dispensary who would sell it to the uh, person with the medical card. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I want to make one point: is the testing labs they come into our facility and sample the product. We present them with each batch, and they they take the sample. We don't provide them with the sample. They come in. Right. grab it from the larger batch and then they take it back to their lab and run a battery of tests. Sometimes it can take three days to get results. Oh, okay. So, well, I'm glad you clarified that. They okay. have very high, um, high tech equipment, very uh, expensive labs. And 
Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So once the processors have uh, done what they can do under their license here and gotten uh, the product in a position where it can now go to uh, the dispensary or retail seller, let's talk about the retail seller a little bit more. Talk about that vape, uh, how it's dispensed, uh, the, the medical marijuana um, um, and then I think I want to get into, because we only have about 12 minutes or so left, I want to get into what, there's so much here, but uh, well, well, let's talk about who is eligible, uh, talk about the, uh, uh, the definitions, just generally, I'm looking at my notes here, uh, the 21 qualifying conditions, we don't have to go through everything here and the doctors, let's at least get through that tonight. So uh, we're talking the about dispensaries. dispensaries. Yeah, dispensaries, there's um, 58 open throughout the state right now. And specifically locally, there's three. Uh, there's you one of the locations. There's one up on Needmore Road. There's one on Wayne Avenue in the Oregon District. And there's one on Airway Road um, over near the Air Force Base. Um, I believe there's four more with the new round of dispensaries coming out next year. There's four more um, coming to Montgomery County. But the uh, vaporizing devices you were talking about, each one, every every um, producer or processor kind of has their own hardware that they that they're um, using. Ours, we have a our battery that powers the vaporizing device shuts off after 10 seconds automatically. So that's how we um, provide dosing. That's how many of the, the batteries that go with these uh, vaporizing cartridges provide the dosing okay. technology. Do these, do these cartridges look at all like uh, vaping, non-medical uh, marijuana vaping? Uh, do they look at all uh, like this? Uh, yeah, I'm sure some do. Okay. The vaping device hardware is, you know, it's all similar con similar uh, engineering, I'm sure. Okay. Okay. So, so let's make sure we get this in now. We have about 10 minutes remaining. And maybe folks have been waiting this. Who's eligible and, and how, how does someone become eligible to qualify to uh, receive medical marijuana in Ohio? Sure. Uh, those those that are eligible have to have one of uh, the 25 qualifying conditions that the Ohio legislature has allowed to treat medical marijuana or treat um, with medical marijuana. The individuals need to, if they're interested in, in treating a condition, one of their one of the conditions. Um, that qualify for treatment with medical marijuana. They need to consult their doctor, see if their doctor has the ability to provide a recommendation for medical marijuana. And if they don't, I believe on medicalmarijuana.ohio.gov, uh, somewhere there's um, likely a list of doctors throughout the state who are licensed to recommend medical marijuana. Um, and then once you meet with a doctor, qualify for a medical marijuana card, you have to register it with the Ohio Board of Pharmacy. Most of the time, uh, my understanding is that the doctor's offices can assist with that. I'm not 100% sure on that fact, but it's um, how I understand the process to work. What, what would be for the individual, let's say, uh, I want, thought that uh, because I have one of these qualifying conditions, and let me just name a few, uh, AIDS, and amyotrophic, uh, amyotrophic uh, lateral sclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, hep C, uh, hepatitis C, inflammatory bowel disease, uh, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, sickle cell anemia, traumatic brain injury, and you said there were 
the sheet I had said 21, but it's up to 25 now. Uh, you, you go to your doctor, I would go to my doctor and say, or maybe the doctor might even suggest that I might qualify for this based upon pain issues, for instance, that I'm having. And so uh, they discuss this with their doctor. Their doctor is not a doctor that has been certified to do this. He or she would, I imagine, have access to uh, a list or the website where uh, people could go. Is, did the website that you mentioned, I think, a moment ago, is, is that or is there some other or both uh, the best place for people to go online to read about how best to go through this process? Is there a the the average Medicalmarijuana.ohio.gov is the state's um, official website for um, any and all medical marijuana regulatory questions. The as far as uh, finding a doctor in Ohio to recommend medical marijuana, um, Google is also a great resource. I'm sure if you just um, look it up, Ohio medical medical marijuana card or uh, something of that nature. I'm sure there'll be doctors that um, you know websites available that uh, right. can can help. Now, yeah, your website provide certain information on these topics also, right? Our, um, ours is very limited. It shows, you know, there's some pictures of our facility on there. Uh, there's where we're available, where we have products available at dispensaries, I believe is on there. Um, but like we were talking earlier, the regulatory environment is very strict and any, any marketing, any website, any information we put out there has to be approved uh, by the state first before we're allowed to put it out there. So our website isn't super robust, but okay. um, there is some useful information on there. Okay, Re please, uh, the, no, it's a little redundant here, but please repeat the state website that you mentioned a moment ago. Sure, medicalmarijuana.ohio.gov. Okay, okay. And um, in the remaining time we have, we have about two minutes left. Uh, looking at my notes, and I think we've uh, covered quite a bit here based on our discussions and my review of your PowerPoint that you were kind enough to send me. Tell me, is there anything else you'd like to add or if there's anything I said you want to correct, any, uh, anything that uh, you might want based to, to say based upon your past presentations that might help in this process, just letting people know about medical marijuana in Ohio? Um, not too much. We're in the, the medical marijuana in Ohio is still, despite having been having going on for several years now, it's still a very young program. There's a lot of um, improvements that the Ohio medical marijuana program, Department of Commerce, Board of Pharmacy, Ohio Medical Board, are always working on improving the program. The operators, the licensees are always working with them to help improve the program and, and bring better, um, more readily available, and easily accessed products to Ohio's patients. Um, we're also always working on uh, adding, looking at adding additional qualifying conditions to the list every beginning of November through December new qualifying conditions can be submitted to the Ohio Medical Marijuana Control Pro Program for consideration uh, to be added to the list. So um, it's a young program and it's um, always improving and we're proud to be a part of it. Well, thank you. Once again, this was Scott Miller, Vice President of Compliance and General Counsel for Certified uh, Cultivators here in Dayton, Ohio. Scott, it's, it's been wonderful having you here. I think uh, we've uh, discussed uh, a lot tonight. I think uh, regulation is a key in this, when we're talking about this process. Um, the testing is important. Uh, the chain, uh, each step in the process to getting it to the person who needs this medical marijuana. And uh, as you said, hopefully uh, qualifying conditions are being constantly looked at to expand it possibly make more people eligible to receive this if they so choose. Um, 
And uh, I think you, folks uh, can go to the website you mentioned, the state website. I'll just remind them, uh, the, our listeners, anyone watching this, that uh, uh, this is for general information. Uh, speak with your uh, medical provider. Speak with an attorney if you have any concerns about the legality of what you're doing. Uh, uh, this is not intended to be in any way a substitute for medical advice or legal advice or any other kind of advice other than just general information from uh, this knowledgeable young man. Uh, I think that's all. I welcome uh, all of you to join us next month. Though we don't have a topic yet, but it's the first Monday of each month, generally between 7 and 8 p.m. that we're live here. Uh, and once again, we're underwritten by the Dayton Bar Association. Uh, if you need a lawyer through the Dayton Bar Association, you can call 222-7902 the, uh, and ask for the lawyer referral service. Uh, if you have questions for DATV, uh, you can call 937-223-5311. That's 937-223-5311. And I think that's all for this evening. And again, Scott, thank you very much for joining us. Good night. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Okay.